How's it going, Teal Boys? It is week 14 here, and we are on a bye. We have another bye next week, but pretty much every team does because it's the Army-Navy week. So we've got recruiting galore to do today before we play in the conference championship. So incredible. Let's look at the conference standings around the country. We are atop the ACC Coastal. And in the ACC Atlantic right now, it looks like we're slated to play against Boston College. Now, Wake Forest and Clemson are sitting in the wings. They've both played all of their conference games. Boston College has to play 8th uh, in the Atlantic, Louisville, for their final game. But should they lose? Let's go ahead and look at some schedules. We can see that Boston College lost to Wake Forest, but beat Clemson. And Wake Forest beat both Clemson and Boston College. So should Boston College lose, Wake Forest will win the Atlantic. Clemson doesn't have a shot at this point, but it's between either the Eagles or the Demon Deacons to see who we will play in the game which will crown the conference champion. In the American, it's pretty much all USF. Uh, they do play Cincinnati though, so the winner of that game will win the American. That's a, that's a fun one. In the Big 12, it's Oklahoma, and I think they're home free. Well, they do. Oh, Oklahoma has two games to play still. TCU and Oklahoma State. So a chance for things to be shaken up in the Big 12. In the Big 10 East, it's between Michigan and Ohio State. They're the final game. So whoever wins that one will be representing the East in the championship. And in the Big 10 West, it looks like it could be Purdue. Who do they have to play? They're done. Wisconsin needs to beat Minnesota, but they already lost to Purdue, so I think Purdue has stamped their ticket into the Big Ten Conference Championship. The CUSA East is between Western Kentucky and Old Dominion, and they play each other. <laughs> I love it when two teams battling get to play each other, you know, for that top spot in the division. The CUSA West, surprisingly led by North Texas, Louisiana Tech trailing them, uh, but they've already played all their games, so... Who won between these two? North Texas did. So I think North Texas is in no matter what. They have the tiebreaker. So should they lose to UTSA, it won't really matter. Our two independents, Army and BYU. Well, BYU is having a terrible year, 3-9. and nine, But the Black Knights of Army are 7-4, and four, which is not too shabby. The MAC East, we've got Buffalo. There's no chance for them to really lose it at this point. They just have to play a pretty bad Kent State. And the MAC West, Toledo is up at the top. They're just fighting with Central Michigan, who they beat, so they will be making it to the conference championship. The Mountain West Mountain is Boise State up top. They'll play San Jose. Um, they did lose to Wyoming, so there is a chance if they lose this one that Wyoming, should they beat Air Force, um, they could jump in and go to their conference championship. The Mountain West West. It's between Nevada and Fresno State. Um, I think Nevada beat Fresno State. Yeah, they did. So if both teams win, Nevada's in. Uh, Fresno needs to hope that Nevada loses. The Pac-12 North, we've got Stanford taking it easily. They're the number one team in the country. 10-1. and one. Uh, Just no, no problem there. In the South, it's USC at 9-2, and two, who I believe has done it because their last game... Well, their last game is against UCLA. So, yeah, if UCLA wins that, they'll be representing the South. Probably just get slapped down by Stanford. The SEC East is Georgia up and through because they finished their conference game. So, they have made it. And in the West, it's going to be LSU, the number two team in the country. 8-0 in conference. Uh, we see Auburn and Bama down at 8-3. And, and in our old Sun Belt, it's the Ragin' Cajuns on top. Uh, followed by Georgia State, but that one's pretty much over. Actually, it's not. There's a lot of conference games to be played still. Um, both uh, the Ragin' Cajuns and Georgia State have two more conference games to go. But I think because Louisiana Lafayette beat Georgia State, it shouldn't matter. They should have the tiebreaker. So they, I believe at this point, have pretty much uh, clinched their championship in the conference. So a lot on the line today, especially for us. I mean, we're, what, 15th or 14th in the country in terms of our coaches poll rank. We're at 12th in the BCS. Bunch of ranked games. Uh, LSU, Arkansas, TCU, Oklahoma. 
uh, that's a massive one. Three versus four. Michigan, Ohio State will be big. So a lot to fight for. Bama, Auburn is a, a ranked Iron Bowl. So I'm curious to see what happens. We don't have to play, thankfully. So we can just kind of sit back until the conference championship Reese's at the top of the Heisman watch list. Um, no, no problems there. Uh, <laughs> we're doing, we're looking real good. And we've got uh, a bunch of uh, awards finalists. So Reese White for the Maxwell. Reese also for the Walter Camp. We've got Shelton up there for the Bednarik. Reese is up for the Doak Walker. Shelton up again for the best linebacker. It kind of just looks like we have two good players. The Thorpe. Jordan Morris, the senior, has made his way onto that list. We won't be up there for the Groza or the guy, but for the best returner, Reese, looking to get another little piece of hardware to add to its trophy case this season. And it seems like he's a shoe in um, closing in on twice as many kick return yards. He's got two touchdowns to the other guy's one, so he's looking pretty dang solid. Right now, where are we projected? I think last we saw we were Orange Bowl or something. Uh, what are we at now? Still the Orange Bowl, still against USF. 9 versus 15. That would be a pretty solid matchup, but we want more than that. Again, we will be doing, I believe, just a four-team playoff this year, so uh, we would need a lot of chaos in conference championship week, and we would need to get a lot of love in the polls to jump into that uh, playoff. But we've taken our looks at ESPN, so let's go into the recruiting for the week. We've got uh, a bunch of guys that we need to pick up. And a bunch of guys that uh, we need to take off the board. I think we had a few guys commit last week. We have, what is that, 700 points to put towards somebody. We're starting to look okay in who we're getting. Do we use an unlock on Mark Wilson? We have two left. I don't expect to get locked out with anybody else. Let me see, though. Well, I've checked enough of the people that we would get locked out of. The two that we care about are Serge Mitchell and Michael May, but we're not really worried about either of those getting locked out. Maybe Serge Mitchell, but Michael May should be fine. We have a visit this week with him, so we'll unlock Mark Wilson just because it could be nice to pick him up uh, should things go awry in our recruiting or if we just, you know, we want to pick up another guy. Um, what is he, a 67 overall middle linebacker? Something, again, that could be useful in a couple of years down the road. Nobody ready for a visit. Somehow, um, Michael May, we never got a visit with? No, we have him. Sorry, uh, Serge Mitchell. We never we never got him to want to come visit, even though we've been just steadily climbing up his board. So, a little bit interesting. Only us in Eastern Michigan have offered him scholarships. Uh, I have a feeling we could beat them out in the offseason, but we need good things to happen. So what we're going to do is go through and go do a kind of our standard for this week where we just give pretty much all the points that we can to the top players that we can. Um, we don't necessarily want Mike Harris all that bad just because he's like he's a decent quarterback, but he's a pocket passer. Antonio Odom is a Juco guy, so he could be nice, but I'm thinking maybe Michael White. Is he Juco? No. So Michael White's going to get 600 points this week. Um, and Eric Rollins defensive end. So either we give points to the 75 overall defensive end, who would be a true freshman, or we give points to the 79 overall defensive end, who would be a Juco, probably junior. And I think that it would be worth it to give that extra 100 to Eric. And you know what? I actually just went and looked. We're like not really all that close with Michael White. So instead, we're going to give those points to somebody who cares about us. And we'll just go through and find guys who are a little bit more solid that we either have a lead with or we're looking good. Paul Johnson seems like a good candidate. Uh, that defensive end, 540 points clear of the lead. Not really sure where else we would go. Um, Paul Moore's already getting points. Eric Rollins is the Juco. Full points. Tony Lacey's not the best. So, yeah, I think that we'll just uh, go up there. Antonio Odom, Tim Smith's mediocre. So, uh, yeah, we're just gonna we're gonna go for the guys who we can potentially pick up. Paul Johnson gets points, and so will Antonio Odom, and that will be our recruiting done for the week. Before we go to next week, we do not have a good class. We have only signed six guys so far, not even in the top 100. Meanwhile, at the top of the board, Georgia has 24 guys already. How do you almost have your full class? With a couple of weeks to go, you're not even in the off season. 17 three stars, three four stars, four five stars. That's like actually kind of absurd. I got to imagine they have the most. Yeah, Tulsa's got a lot of guys, but not as impressive. 
well, we simp through the week and hope that uh, somebody enjoyed their visit. Um, maybe Michael May, we, we can get him to commit soon. I'm not sure, but uh, maybe also we see some crazy losses and we can move up in the rankings. Oh, that's great news. Our defensive coordinator, Chad Staggs, has leveled up. Um, okay, Nick Cox. <laughs> Gets me every time. Uh, committed to Wisconsin. Mark Wilson, that middle linebacker, has locked us out. But we're still in recruiting battles with the guys that we want, including Michael May. Uh, they list him as a wide receiver. He's going to be our quarterback if we can pick him up. And Stephen Muhammad and Greg Jones would be his uh, targets. So we don't have a whole lot of recruiting points to give out this week, so it'll be pretty quick. But we do have this defensive coordinator level up, and we are going to max out the no-fly zone. I feel like uh, we run a lot of zone, so we might as well, you know, give our guys the biggest benefit that they can get. Next, I mean, it would make sense if maybe we go road closed and get uh, block shedding, stopping the run. But I'm always tempted to just try to get the shut down and, and try to stop them from passing. We already do a decent job stopping the run, uh, you know, throughout this season. I think we're ranked nationally number one. So if we could stop the passing a little bit better, that would probably be our next goal. And we are at 14th. I don't know if we moved up. I feel like we were 15 last week. So let's check out ESPN before we give out those 100 recruiting points. Um, was that Michigan losing to Ohio State? Oh, no, they beat Ohio State. Hey, good for them. So the Buckeyes dropped quite a bit. Michigan jumps us. Oklahoma managed to beat TCU, so they jump in. Wait, Stanford's not up here. Stanford must have taken a loss. So number four, number one, and number five all lost. Unfortunately, they're still in front of us. Uh, they have equal or better records than us, but that's great news for us in general. We could have jumped them in the BCS. USC lost to UCLA, so UCLA will be playing uh, Stanford now in the uh, Pac-12 championship game. Alabama lost to Auburn. Oh, man. We can actually see a lot of those championship games up here, so or, or just games that haven't been played. Oklahoma State plays Oklahoma this week. I think that we want Oklahoma to lose. Um, Oklahoma State losing probably gives us a better chance to jump up, but at the end of the day, I want to make it to the playoffs, so we want to see... Uh, as many high up teams lose as possible. The BCS pull the one that matters. We are not top 10. Are we 11th? We didn't move up at all. We stayed exactly where we were. Somehow Oregon jumps us after beating Oregon State. They have a worse record. I mean, they're eight and four is a 99 overall. Come on, you can't let the Ducks beat us there. How are they ranked higher than Stanford? Ah, that's fine. We're still a, a top 12 team, so I, I can't complain too much. And as long as the Heisman goes our way, that's what matters. Reese staying in his spot. We see, uh, you know, Zonovan Knight and Zach Charbonnet switch spots. We've played a lot of these guys, or at least a couple. Sam and uh, Zonovan we've played. I don't think anybody else. We've seen Charbonnet up here for a long time, though. We are now still scheduled for the Orange Bowl, or projected. But back matched up against Auburn. Remember when we were uh, scheduled to go to the Peach Bowl? They had us matched up against Auburn. Now things have moved around a bunch. We're no longer up against USF. They must have lost. No, they didn't. They've just gone up in the rankings and now they're scheduled in the Fiesta Bowl. But uh, we're still looking at an Orange Bowl. Just maybe a much more difficult matchup. Ooh, this could be big. We have 100 points to give out, but we have four guys ready to visit. So we could pick up some, some nice stuff. Adam Brown, Serge Mitchell, we can get the visit for. Paul Moore is ready, and so is Tim Smith. So those are going to be very, very big. And Mark Wilson has locked us out. Now, this could be, you know, we we were thinking about giving him points last week. We could unlock him and get right back in there, but I think we're going to save it. We only have one use left. There's some weird chance where we get locked out by somebody that we want more. So we're just going to leave him as it is, and we'll give Antonio Odom another 100 points. Try to continue to stay in there against Wisconsin, who is uh, really going gung-ho for this guy. But uh, I don't know. What, you know, what are we looking like? We have a good lead now with Michael May, which is fantastic. We, have, we had a massive visit last week, up 400. And we're fighting against Kent State and Cincinnati, mostly. I guess West Virginia, Purdue are in there. But I have a very good chance we're getting him. If we don't get him to commit or if I don't feel confident, we'll be giving him a ton of points in the offseason because... I mean, if he's the only person that we get, that's it. You know, not the end of the world. We would love to have some other guys. Greg Jones is a, 
a great wide receiver. He's pretty quick. He's got good hands. Um, I mean, there's a lot of guys. Stephen Muhammad would be nice to have, but if we can't get these guys at the end of the day, we have to make a decision, and we need a good quarterback, and Michael May is that guy. So once again, we will advance the week to conference championship week. Oh, I'm curious who's who we're playing. I'm going to leave it a suspense. I think it'll be Boston College. I, I don't know, though. It's either them or Wake Forest. It'll definitely be a matchup that we could win. And I'm curious to see what happens around the country. Uh, give me more pudding, please. So nothing changes with uh, the, the recruiting news that we have. Still locked out by Mark Wilson. Nothing too crazy. We've made it to the conference championship, which is nice. And who are we going to be playing? Boston College, number 17 in the country. We don't move at all. They're 9-3. and three. We're 9-3. and three. They have the slight edge. They were, what, like 89 or 90 overall. We're favored to win the game, even with our minus 11 turnover differential on this season. Uh, what? Who have they played? What are they looking like? They lost to Army, which is a bad loss. Then they lost to a... Very mediocre Notre Dame team that we beat. Um, they lost to Wake Forest. They had to go to overtime against NC State. That's an NC State team that slaughtered us, and, and they beat them. So that's a little bit concerning. And they, just like us, are on a pretty big winning streak. Uh, ours is a little bit bigger. You know, just buy a game. Try to make it eight games in a row. That would be pretty nice. Coming off of the massive overtime victory against Duke last time out, I'm a little bit worried and let's go ahead and see what are the conference championship games that we have right now. The ACC is us, obviously. The MAC is Toledo, Buffalo, North Texas, Western Kentucky, and this USA. Georgia, LSU, and the SEC. Boise State, Nevada, in the Mountain West. UCLA and Stanford in the Pac-12. And Purdue at Michigan in the Big Ten. And then we had a couple of uh, other conferences that don't play. Now, I imagine, I mean, they've added the playoff in... I got to imagine at some point we're going to get uh, like a Big 12 conference championship and all that stuff with the uh, college football revamped mod. I know that it's possible with the database editor, which is the tool that's essentially used to make the playoffs. So I have to imagine there's a way for that to, to happen. Uh, did anything change in the top 25 last week? We see Oklahoma State did lose to Oklahoma, so they are pretty much guaranteed a spot in the, in the playoff. USF lost to Cincinnati. Uh, still, we don't jump them, which is kind of a shame. Maybe we're slated to play them again. What about the BCS? We were 12. Do we move up at all? Still not top 10, not 11. So still sitting in 12. I, I think our chances of making it into the playoff are uh, pretty much non-existent. And Reese still atop the Heisman watch list. This is going to be an incredibly important game for his campaign. We'll see if we can get it done. And let's get into it. We are the home team, technically. Uh, they have the edge over us, which is kind of a shame. Let's go ahead and wear something a little bit funky. Actually, you know what? Why go funky when we can go just kind of standard? All black for this game. Boston College, we can get let them wear their, uh, their home uniforms, and we could have a colorway game. But what do they have as options? Just the gold helmet. They've got the... Uh, normal stuff the red bandana ones white their home uh pants wise it's gold that red bandana the 2019 maroon and the 2019 gold and the white uh but we're just gonna stick them with their standard home uniform 90 overall to our 83 they've got a 93 offense and an 87 defense this won't be an easy game let's go ahead and get into this one this season they had a very good offense pretty much top 25 with a really good defense as well. They're not great at stopping the pass, but everything else is impressive. <laughs> Meanwhile, we score a lot of points, uh, but we don't move the ball very well, and we are not good at preventing our opponents from scoring points. Uh, top players, this is for this year, right? Yeah, so this is the next game. It will show next year's top players, but uh, their top players in 87 overall running, running back in Garwo the third. I'm sure he's going to have a great game. A left tackle and a right guard who's injured. What other injuries? Just him and he's questionable. So this seems like a pretty healthy game between these two teams. Let's see how it goes. Oh, so we're here in Charlotte at the Bank of America Stadium. It is a snowy day. There are a lot of fans still in attendance. What can we get done? Boston College on the toss will lose, which means we can just kick this ball off and hope that we are in a good spot at halftime. 
So Boston College has elected to get the wind at their back for the second and fourth quarters, which means we could be kicking into the wind in a clutch situation as the game is ending, but hopefully that doesn't matter and we can just win this easily. Potentially an injured player on the opening kickoff, though. We're going to come out in the man to open this game up as this game will get underway. The first play looking like it's going to be a run. Oh, I thought it was going to be out towards the edge. They just keep it inside and they pick up four yards. Second and six now. We'll see what they do. Will they continue to run? Man in motion. That makes me think run. Quarterback kind of kept it. I don't know what that was. If that was supposed to be a play action or some sort of RPO. But it only works for a yard and it's third and five. So we've got a great opportunity here. Another man in motion to try and get this stop. They will go to the air. They're going to look deep. Baker. Oh my gosh. Oh, I just got burned. Oh, that's so embarrassing. Easy touchdown. That should have been so easy to swat away, but uh, I just got in my own way. And Boston College scores. Should have been a stop. Unfortunately, down seven. Well, that freaking sucks. Not the way that we wanted to open up the game as a defense. Uh, can't be giving up big plays like that. That is not good news. Although, big plays of our own. Reese White trying to have a Heisman game in a foot race is going to answer back immediately. His third kick return for a touchdown this season. Oh my goodness. The pancake block opened things up and gave us a perfect lane straight down the sideline and reese is able to utilize his speed and maybe the fresh legs since that's his first carry of the day to take it to the house so the defense actually gets bailed out a little bit there another chance to come out and try to get a stop we'll see if the tackling exists today they almost pick up a first down immediately and we're gonna bring the blitz on second and inches they will go back to pass quarterback scrambling and we hit him, but he got enough for the first down. BC is five wide, as I kind of expected this. They go with the QB blast. Surprisingly, they got three yards, but we knew that was coming. Trying to bring a little bit of pressure on second and seven. They're going to go play action. Quarterback's going to scramble. Oh, what a perfect block. Oh my gosh, I can't use her today. We're just missing people all over the place. We gave up 30 yards on the run. We would be dominating this game right now if I could just learn how to tackle. Instead, uh, they're back in field goal range. Good job with the safety blitz that time. We force them to run it outside and we get the stop. This game shouldn't even be close at this point. Second and 12, though. And they run the counter. We're there with Charles Steele. We've got him in a third and long. We could hold them to three points. Just going to go with the three-man rush as we put Cheney in the QB spy because they have been doing nothing but scrambling and... Well, that's not useful. Another big play, 21-yard reception, gives them the first and goal. I hope they don't realize how effective their running has been. As first down, they will go to the air. And there's a man wide open. Galloway scores his second receiving touchdown of the day. Oh, no. Well, at least this seems like it'll be a close game. I don't know. Our offense hasn't had a chance to see the field yet. They might get the opportunity on this return. Although, Reese, ooh, 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 one block, and he could have been gone. Good field position for the offense's first drive, though. If we want to win this game, we have to avoid the turnovers. But I'm looking deep. Audibling, looking deep. This is probably a pick. Bed good, the ball's underthrown. Oh, my. Oh, my gosh. I forced the fumble. They were so lucky to pick that back up. Oh, <laughs> What am I doing? I don't understand how uh, we're even in this game right now. This has been atrocious. Oh my gosh. We can't tackle. We're giving the ball up. We can't stop them from getting good plays. This is just not optimal. First and 10. They're going to hand it off again out towards the edge. We're there with Diggs. Actually some decent user for me to make sure that we got the tackle, but we're going to follow it up by missing like 10 of them. Second and 10 now. What will they do? Man in motion. I'm calling this a run out to the left. They run kind of a counter. Diggs, man, I had to just try to cut off the outside, and we just gave up another big touchdown play. This is literally the worst start to a game we've had all season. We've given up 21 points, and it's... Uh, I don't know. We're still in the first quarter. Oh, I'm getting really tired of returning kickoffs. This is annoying. 21 to 7. 
Can we do anything on offense, or are we just going to give them the ball right back? We've run just a single play on offense so far this game. Let's hope that we can run more than that on this drive. Okay, we didn't turn the ball over. Maybe something good can happen now. All righty, Reese on the counter. The blocking is okay. I don't think I needed to spin there. We've got a third and manageable, though. Uh, we're just going to hand this off. I'm going to say it's four down territory because I don't trust the defense, but hopefully, yeah, we don't need to. Reese gets eight yards, gets us across the 45. We'll go back to pass on this first down, and we're going to give it to Reese. I don't think he has a whole lot of room to work with, but keeping the legs moving. Got six yards out of the play. For the final play of this first quarter, we're going to try a read option, which Reese is going to get the handoff for, and he's almost going to get us another first down. We're safely across midfield. We need, absolutely need, a touchdown on this drive. Um, My goodness. We need the defense to get a little bit of a breather and try to figure some things out. Another third down for us. We'll put it on the ground. Give it to Reese, who uses his blockers effectively and gets nine more yards. So this could be a game of us running the ball a ton really effectively and them doing anything that they want effectively. But in this case, first down, we will pass the ball. A play action, trying to find something. The blocking not holding up, trying to get outside the pocket. We got to get rid of this one. Can't call the intentional grounding, thankfully, but Grayson starts the game one of three with an interception. They did a great job containing the edge. We couldn't pick up the blocks, so had to get rid of the ball. And on that second down, we lost the yard, so third and long here. I'm not sure it's wise, but we might go for a field goal if we don't get this. Obviously outside the pocket over the middle. Dion Fountain has a first down, so for now we can curb any talks of kicking a field goal. And we need this game to just continue working with us. Reese, though... Not doing great running so far. He's averaging four yards a carry, but it's a really difficult four yards. We'll continue to feed him, but I'm a little bit worried uh, that they will figure us out. But okay, that play works. Well, I can't complain when we get <laughs> like nine yard plays out of nowhere. So we'll just uh, continue to run and expect that he'll go for like a yard or two and then a yard or two and then nine. That seems to be the case so far. Inside the 15 with a first down. We'll try the play action. I don't see anything, so we're going to roll outside the pocket. And X might have been open. We get hit at the line of scrimmage. I thought maybe we could scramble past them, but obviously that was wrong. Second and 10 now. Let's try the read option for positive yards. Grayson will get to keep it. He's got blockers in front of him. And Grayson, wow, staying on his feet through the contact. Gets the touchdown. It's back to a seven-point game. But if the defense doesn't perform, we're still in trouble. This is the defense's chance to prove themselves. They should have had to stop the first drive. They screwed up pretty bad the second drive. And the third one, I don't want to talk about. Uh, special teams didn't give them a whole lot to work with, though. Bad field position on this. All righty. Another first down. Kind of expecting a run. But the problem is if they go to the air, the quarterback could take off. Or this dude could just make incredible cuts. Somehow finding the gap for six yards. We have to be blitzing. I think it's the only way. Second and four, they will hand off. We were bringing pressure. It's not going to get there. Reed finally brings him down, but they're at midfield. Garbo having a great game so far. All right, we'll bring pressure with the safeties on this first down, hoping to break it up. Diggs, well, could have been in the backfield, but that's fine. We actually made them lose more yards by missing the tackle with Diggs. Second and 12 now. All right, bring in another little blitz on second down. They actually run the ball up the middle. I was expecting a pass, but they hand it off. It's third and seven. And I feel very certain at this point that they're going to pass. Expecting the quarterback to take off. No, he's got a man wide open. It's enough for the first down just by a yard. And they keep moving. Two minutes left in the half, by the way. All right, first and ten again. Block is moving. They do hand the ball off. And, oh my gosh, this guy is actually the best runner that we've seen this season. Incredible. Pat Garwo the third takes it 40 yards. He's decimating us so far in this game. Oh, back to a 14-point game or lead with a minute and 45 left in the second quarter. All right, well, we need the offense to be moving quick, which is not their standard method of operation. So hoping for the best, maybe a good return. No, the horse collar brings us down at the 20. We've got 80 yards and a minute and 41 to try to get something done here. 
If we throw an interception or fumble the ball or something on this drive, I do not like our chances for the rest of the game. We do have Bedgood. He saved us in the last game, and he's going to do something incredible here. Oh, my gosh. Be big play Bedgood. Maybe that's what we need to call him. Gets us almost to the red zone in one play. First down. We are going to run the ball just real quick. We've got a minute and 31. Plenty of time to work with, so might as well try to continue to utilize the running game. Grayson already has one touchdown with a great read option here. Maybe he could get his second. Second and nine, though. Reese getting the carry. Oh, unfortunately gets tackled. We're going to have to go hurry up. Go into the air here. They're really containing the edge. So we're just going to have to dump off Dion Fountain. Okay, a little step back cheese. Gets us a first and goal. We don't necessarily have to worry too much about the clock at this point. We have all three of our timeouts. We can only go to fourth down. So not worried about that. Uh, and if Reese can ca carry it for six yards a at a time, that'll be great news. Go in the hurry up. 25 seconds left there. Defense wasn't set. Hopefully that's good news for us. Reese does score. Now we need to make sure that in 22 seconds with all three of their timeouts, they don't go down and score again on us. We've essentially been Swiss cheese on defense so far this game. So I am 100% worried in thinking that we're going to give up a lot. Uh, Yeah, our, our special teams can't do much for us either. We'll be using Mackey in the uh, the QB spy. They're going to probably take a timeout after this. Oh my gosh. I can't tackle right now. They get out of bounds. 11 seconds left. This is abysmal. First down, they go to the air and... Quarterback all the time in the world is going to... Oh my gosh, he's in field goal range. He's in field goal range. I was trying to make it so that he ran out the clock without scoring, but we just gave up a field goal. This quarterback 6-6. Six six. Well, we need them to miss this. Hopefully they do. We'll try to bring pressure and see if we can block it. I don't know when to, when to go. Uh, yep, that's not going to work. Kicker! Just put it inside. That's a shame. 21-31. Down 10 as we go into the locker rooms. This was an abysmal half. Like, nothing good happened for us, all things considered. I am so angry at the way the defense played. I threw a stupid interception. Just not a good half for us. And I guess we'll go right into the second half. Didn't mean to skip through whatever cutscene we would have had, but I guess we accidentally did. So Reese will get the opportunity to lead the comeback for us. Good blocking to start. Still on his feet. Okay, got us almost to the 45. So the defense it confirmed cannot get a stop, which means we have to find a way to, to take possessions away from them in other ways. I don't like our odds, but oh my gosh, what a diving tackle. I think we might try a couple onside kicks. We might need to be in the hurry up for the rest of this game as well, because down 10, trying to find a way to even up possessions. We got to be worried about the clock. We'll go to the air on this first down. Trying to get outside the pocket. X is open. Triangle is open over the field. It's Tyson Mobley inside the red zone for another first down. See what we can do. Trying to pick up the yards. Reese with the spin move avoids getting hit in the backfield. Gets five yards on the carry. And we'll give the ball to him again on second and five. This time on a counter. Mm, fell forward for a yard, but got hit pretty much immediately. Looking to the air from just outside the 10-yard line. Do we have the timing route? Oh my gosh. Bad good. It was nowhere near him. Well, that's game. It's going to take a miracle now. Two interceptions already down 10 points. I'm not sure what we can do. This is awful. Oh, so, so awful. We're going to be bringing a lot of pressure. We need to be able to stop them on these plays. I just don't know if the coverage will be good enough when we get them in these long yardage situations. Going to try to use our City McRae for a play. See if we can get pressure that way as they run this one towards the edge. Durham slowed him down, but nobody can tackle this guy. And he got 11 freaking yards, dude. Oh, that's brutal. Well, we're bringing all the pressure. Third and three. We need the stop. Nothing can get there. Man, open. Another broken tackle. You hate to see it. I think our only hope is to just beat them through their bad play calling at this point. Expecting a run on this down. They do hand it off, but up the middle, somehow we had nine guys there and he finds an eight-yard gap. Rushing six on just about every play, but it doesn't seem to matter. Second and two, another handoff towards the edge. We do force a third down. It's going to take a miracle to get this stop the way that we've been playing, though. 
Garwo has 17 carries, 170 yards. Actually can't stop them. We got a sack, though. Oh, the defense did enough. We rushed a lot of guys, so you had to think that the pressure would get there, but I just didn't expect it, and we were about to get beat deep on the pass, so thankfully that happened. The defense has given us a slightly renewed lease on life here, fourth and eight. Kick will be returnable for Reese. Blocking actually seems decent downfield, so we've got okay field position for a punt. Unfortunately, because we didn't score on the last drive, it's still a 10-point game, this time with only two minutes left in the third quarter. So very much at risk as, oh, Grayson just missed Reese by a mile. That was a waste of a play. We'll have to continue to pass because we just don't have time for anything else. Tough throw finds Tyson Mobley. Kind of juked the guy out, got us across midfield. And yeah, I think it's time for exclusive hurry up time. Uh, as the pressure is coming, can we find Reese? That was a tough throw. We got a positive three yards out of the play somehow. On second down, we're going to go with the play action over the middle. Bed good. Oh. He kind of stopped running. Maybe Grayson threw it behind him. That should have been completed, but third and seven. This is absolutely four down territory for us. Oh my gosh. I, wow. I got lucky that we got positive yards and not an interception. I was trying to spam the X button to snap the ball and I accidentally hit it one too many times and we immediately passed it. So that's not good news. We got to go for this on fourth and four. Hoping that something's open. Looking to scramble if it's available to us, which it is. So outside the pocket, we've got the first down. A little bit more, but most importantly, we just keep the drive alive. A minute left in the third quarter. We'll put this one... Well, we're going to throw it. It looks like they want to bring pressure. We got burned doing this earlier in the game. Not this time. Not this time. The pressure actually is coming. Outside the pocket, we've got our one. We've got Mobley. we got a good five yards. Keep trying to move the ball as best we can. There's Logan Malden for another first down, which will temporarily stop the clock. And we're going to look to the air again on this first down. Again, outside the pocket. Nobody, circle was kind of open. I don't feel comfortable making that throw. I do feel comfortable with Grayson diving to the end zone. The 22-yard scramble for a touchdown. We've made this again a one-score game. And with as much time as there is on the clock... I'm going to try an onside kick here. 22 seconds left in the third quarter. I got a decent kick, a decent amount of power. We recovered it. Oh, for everybody who says that we don't know how to do it, I am the god at recovering onside kicks. Our last stream with the Thick Boys, we got two in a single game. The last time I streamed on Twitch, we got two in a single game. And we are right back into this game. Fourth quarter. Coming up, Reese. Oh, stumbled down. Still picked up 23 yards. Maybe we could score before the fourth quarter. Trying to get these plays off as quick as we can. I'm going to sit in the pocket. Oh, I just threw a pick. No. Thank goodness. Oh, I thought that was an interception. We're still alive. We'll utilize the hurry up. I expect this to be the final play, though. We'll see what we can do. The counter to Reese. The blocking was pretty solid. A first down would stop the clock, but I don't think that we're going to be able to get another playoff here in the third quarter so on to the fourth we will go three point game now we got the onside kick it's eliminated some of our problems we just need to hold on to the ball and maybe get one more stop from the defense a touchdown here to give us the lead would be uh, so massive so to open up the fourth quarter we're gonna go with a dive on third and two it's enough for the first down reese fumbled the ball and they recovered it are you kidding me <laughs> Oh, you can't do that if you're going to win the Heisman, Reese. It's clearly out of his hands. All that work just to be snuffed out by a play like that. Well, the defense has proven to us that they can get a stop. We're going to need another one here, though. They're going to run it. We've tried to bring pressure. Charles thankfully gets the tackle, only giving up five yards. We're going to continue to try to bring pressure here. They will go to the air, unfortunately, guys. Have to be open, but they threw it out in the flat. Sidney McCray. How does Sidney McCray not get that tackle? This man is literally unstoppable. He got 11 yards and a first down. What are we supposed to do in a situation like that? First and 10. This one's going to be a play action. 
I tried to get pressure on the quarterback just a little bit late. Still can't tackle these guys. And the big boy is rumbling down the field. 37 yards to like a lineman. This is ridiculous. This quarterback has not missed. Nine of nine on the day. And at this point, the only way that we are uh, going to be even part of this discussion for this game is if we somehow just let them score and get a bunch of two-point conversions because our defense is the worst that we've seen it this entire season. They chose one hell of a game not to show up. Expecting a run. They're going to go to the air and okay. Well, at least we got the quarterback to finally get an incompletion. I mean, he threw it away, but it counts. Second and goal here. They just step back to pass again. They threw it out in the flat. They just lost seven yards. What are they doing throwing that? Maybe a chance to hold them to a field goal. So now they've got a third and goal from outside the 10. This is our best chance so far this game to get a stop. And of course we can't. Oh my gosh, Jelani Galloway has literally just torched us. Uh, like there's nothing that we can do against that. Wow. Well, back down by 10 and the clock's looking real small at this point. I honestly thought that we had every chance in the world to get a stop on that drive, but the defense said otherwise, which is a real shame. So it's time now to hope for a miracle. Just got to be throwing up bombs and hoping that our prayers are answered. Over the middle, we have quick throw to Mobley. That's a good 21 yards. First down. Again, over the middle, there's Logan Malden. Another 16. We're moving quick. Try the play action on this one. Feeling the pressure outside the pocket. Square might be open. I'm just going to scramble. Get out of bounds to stop the clock for now. And we've got... A second and seven to work with. Again, rolling outside the pocket. Hoping for blocks, but uh, first down's good enough. Really hoping that uh, this game doesn't come down to having to actually pass because the scramble is working really well. The Grayson's getting 10 at a time. What really matters to me is just making sure that we're always picking up yards, but staying in the hurry up and burning as little clock as possible is always nice. Reese held onto the ball, thankfully, on that one, but only got three yards. Looks like they want to bring pressure. They will over the middle. We've got Bedgood wide open for a touchdown. Back to a four-point game. We might go for two here. Well, this could be very risky, but we will go to the air and go for two. Our one's open. Mobley caught it. He didn't get in. Bro, just stick your hand out to the left. All right. Well, not down a field goal now. A little bit frustrating. Need another onside kick, and we need a, a desperately need a stop. There's a good amount of power. It would be a miracle if we got two in a row, and we won't. So they're going to have good field position with the defense, and now a field goal gives them a touchdown lead. Well, they're already in clock burning mode, which is bad news, but maybe that means they're going to be just running the ball a lot. Please get the tackle. You can't. How can we give up five yards every single time? This guy is literally averaging almost a first down per carry it's not much that we can do to stop that second and five just gonna try to sell out to stop the run which we do i don't have to take our timeouts yet it's third and six all right they're five wide third and six this is our best chance to get off the field if we're lucky they'll run like a qb draw or qb blast they already did one of those in this game they're gonna burn as much clock as they can you know what we're gonna use our sydney mccray and again try to get some pass rush here I think it's our best chance of uh, sneaking in, disrupting things. We know exactly when to rush. Oh, we got picked up way too easily. Look how wide open he is. Well, we got to let him score. We don't have a choice. Oh, this game is so freaking frustrating. Well, the only way for us to win it now is to score incredibly quick and get another onside kick. And two in a game is not easy to do. Take a, pretty much a miracle. Maybe Reese can return this. He already has one kick returned for a touchdown in the game. Doesn't quite have that one, but he takes us so far downfield. It'll be a quick touchdown if we can just uh, keep the clock from moving. So a minute and 50, we do ha have all our timeouts. It technically wouldn't be over if we didn't get the onside kick, but it might as well be. Circle was wide open in the end zone. I just missed it. Grayson, thankfully, still got us another first down. We will go to the air circle open again. Logan Malden gets the touchdown. We spent like, what, 12 seconds on that drive? Oh, it's not over yet. Five-point game. We're going for two. Try to make it a field goal. Scrambles wide open. Grayson has it, no problem. All we need is an onside kick now. 
Uh, there's no reason to kick it off here. So let's just hope that we do this right and hope that we get lucky. Way too much power. Our odds of getting it are pretty low. Williams picks it up. And that'll be all she wrote. Ethan Williams, great hands. Defense has to hold very quickly. We'll be using our timeouts immediately. Well, we know that they're going to be running the ball on this play. So let's see if we can actually stop them. Oh my gosh, we rushed nine guys and almost gave up a first down. How bad can we be? Well, time to go in the goal line because it's basically the goal line for us. Second and one. Trying to get the stop. It's the handoff out towards the edge. It is third and four. One timeout left. If we stop him and hold him to a field goal, we're still in it. Uh, we do have to worry a little bit about the pass. I'm expecting to see the run. Hopefully they don't. Third and four, they'd step back to pass. Man open, and he's inbounds. That's game. That is so, so sucky. Oh, what a terrible game. Nothing fun about that one. We got our asses handed to us. And I, it's going to take us allowing them to score. Literally the only option that we have if we're going to do anything is just to let him continue to rack up yards. He has less than 20 carries. He has over 200 yards. Something ridiculous like that. It's just not fair. We had no chance from the get-go with him running as well as he has. So I don't know. A, a miracle could happen here. But we can't expect it. And not a good enough return. We got a long ways to go. Take away the interceptions. And Reese White fumbling the football to start the fourth quarter will forever haunt us. So, so devastating. We're not over yet, though. Dion Fountain catches it and gets out of bounds. We have a timeout. We have a minute and seven. We're only down two scores. Not going to give up on the game. As unlikely as it seems, although this could be at bed good in the end zone. He's out of bounds. Oh my gosh. Just stay in bounds. They're going to look at it at least. I don't think he's in, but maybe that toe is. Could this be a catch? That's a touchdown. That is a catch. We got to get the, the points for that. Come on. Let's go! A minute and two on the game, and we've got it back to three points. So it's not over yet. I mean, it basically is over if we don't get this, but not yet. Decent amount of power on the kick. We touched it early. Uh, dang it. We had so many opportunities. Just couldn't quite do it. Well, we got to hope for like a turnover. Or maybe we allow them to score again. But it's not going to be, we'll take the timeout and they can just come out in the victory formation. What a frustrating game to lose in the conference championship. But, you know, it is it is what it is. Actually, you know what? They've made a mistake. They've made a mistake. We're going to get the ball back. You know, if we would have gone for two on every single one of those and converted, we'd be able to tie this game up. Unfortunately, not the case, but 50 seconds. Hey, we can show that we've shown that we can score that quick. I don't know why they wouldn't just take a knee, but we'll take what we can get. Back down 10. This one is uh, kind of ridiculous, but I'm going to continue to cheese as much as we can uh, to hope for the best. Oh my gosh, another good return for Reese. Good field position with 44 seconds. Well, let's see what we can do. Not a whole lot of distance to go to get to the end zone, and... Circle was actually wide open, so that's a mistake not throwing that, but we didn't burn too much time, and we got 24 yards halfway to the goal. Bedgood has been cooking his man alive. We just haven't seen it all that often. Thank goodness we got rid of that and didn't take the sack. Oh, missed a couple of guys. Second and 10, looking for it again. Hoping that somebody comes open or Grayson can scramble. He's picking up some blocks. He's got a first and goal with 26 seconds left. If we manage to win this, I'm going to lose my absolute mind outside the pocket. Malden's open. It's back to three points. How come we couldn't score like this to begin the game? Oh my goodness. Well, I thought that last one was our final chance, but we get another one. That was a good amount of power. Please. Dang it. Smith has the best hands I've ever seen. And now they're going to come out in the victory formation. A three-point game. We gave up like 80 million points in the fourth quarter, and we scored a bunch, but none of it is enough for us to get the win. 
Oh, so, so, so disappointing. Three turnovers, we lose the game by three points. Uh, it shouldn't happen this way. Unfortunately, it has. At this point, I just hope that we get a play in a good bowl game. Ugh, the fairy tale season so far comes to an end there. Uh, I just, I'm hurt. I'm really, really hurt. Uh, that interception immediately when the offense came to the field, the touchdown, this touchdown right here. We should have absolutely been able to cover that. Uh, instead, my user is garbage, as you guys are well aware at this point. And they score on a on a third and long, so that kicked off the game uh, with a bad start. Well, Michigan slaughtered Purdue in the Big Ten Championship, and Stanford was able to bounce back from their loss to beat UCLA in the Pac-12. 28 points scored each in the fourth quarter, but look at that first quarter. We gave up 21, and we had so many opportunities down the stretch to make plays. The defense, you know, we got them in that third and goal from their own 12 and then we gave up a slant route where he just ran through a bunch of guys into the end zone so many opportunities to get back in the game but we just couldn't quite do it and so we take a sad loss our fourth of the season look at pat garwo the third 25 carries for 254 yards and four touchdowns that is an absolutely insane stat line nothing that we could do to stop it grayson uh, too many turnovers, but I, I honestly think Grayson's turnovers can be excused. It's the fumble by Reese White to start the fourth quarter that ended the game. We had all the momentum. We were driving to take the lead and up the middle on just a standard halfback dive. He lost control. And from then on, we just couldn't clutch out and, and get the momentum back on our side. So always trying to find our silver linings. We did level up as a head coach, which is nice. And we have a tough decision. Do we go for the kitchen sink or do we go for the closer? Um, closer gives us 500 points that we could use this week. Kitchen sink would allow us to boost up the rest of the guys. I think we're going to go kitchen sink. And that gives us a little bit more recruiting work to do. And of course, I mean that like as in the future, we're going to have the recruiting work. Um, yeah, bad loss in the conference championship week. We'll advance to the bowl season to see what game we're playing in. I don't think it's going to be the Orange Bowl. Hopefully we get that Peach Bowl bid. Um, if they want to give us an at-large, that would be fine, but uh, it's kind of a shame. Well, the game didn't ruin his chances. Reese White has won the Heisman. Oh, again, finding the uh, the silver linings. 4,084 all-purpose yards and 34 total touchdowns. Reese is able to get it done in his red shirt senior season. He won it by a landslide. The Stanford or Stanford running back came second. Sam Howell only came third. But Reese, 471 first place votes. Did we get any other awards? We're playing in the Peach Bowl against Georgia. Oh, we're going to get slaughtered. They're 9 and 4, but I guarantee you they're 99 overall. And it's in Atlanta. Oh, that's going to be rough. Uh, so we win the Heisman. He wins the Walter Camp, I imagine. Okay, he gets the Doak Walker. Uh, and he wins the Johnny Rogers Award. That's the Returner of the Year. Uh, that's that's a pretty impressive haul of trophies that he's brought in. We drop down to number 21. George is unranked. They're still going to be favored to win this game. They're an A+, plus 11 for their turnover differential compared to our minus 14. <laughs> uh, I don't like our chances in the bowl game, but we've won some big upsets before. Maybe we can bounce back. That's going to do it for this episode, though. We'll take a look at conference standings, bull matchups, and we'll set up the uh, the playoff in our next episode. So I appreciate it if you made it this far. <laughs> a little bit of a shame on the game, but I guess it is what it is. If you enjoyed the video and you want to be notified for when new videos are released, feel free to subscribe. It helps out quite a bit. I appreciate it a ton. And while you're subscribing, of course, head to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links to my Twitter in our community Discord, as well as a link to the college football revamped mod so that you can get it for yourself. That being said, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys. Wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. We'll see you later. Adios.